I think we have to go to the gag order, right? We have to go to the gag order because all the threats tying it together um, bring us into the gag order. We covered Judge Mershon's gag order last week. And I actually, in reading it, thought that the initial iteration applied to Mershon's family. Now, let me pull up. This is Judge. This was the order once upon a time last week. And I think we got to pay attention to item two of it says, you know, we're granting the order. This is the gag order for Trump because they're Alex Jones and Trump. You want to talk about the corruption and the same plan that they've done over and over and again now? Gag, manufacture defaults so that you can default verdicts, so you can uh, you know, limit defenses, limit speech, limit the ability to defend in public, limit the ability to call out the corruption in public. We'll get there in a second. They grant the order for a limited gag order. Uh, enjoining Trump from making or directing others to make public statements about one counsel in the case other than the district attorney. So there was a specific exclusion for Alvin Bragg. Members of the court staff and district attorney's staff. So that's members of the court's staff and DA's staff. So that is not the judge and that's not the judge's family. Or the family members of any counsel or staff, if those statements are made of any counsel or staff member. So that doesn't include, that might include the district attorney, but that doesn't include the judge who is definitely not counsel or family. If those statements are made with the intention to blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we can see it here. Court staff, DA staff, and other than the DA. So it specifically excluded um, Alvin Bray. And it did not specifically include the judge because the judge is not, a, is not an attorney, nor is the judge, um, yeah, now... Julie Kelly has the updated gag order, which, oh, it's item three, ordered, yada, yada, yada. Okay, so it's enjoining him from making or directing the public to make statements about one counsel of the case, members of the court staff, the family members of any counsel, staff member, the court, or the district attorney. Who's included in the court? Juan, Juan Judge Juan Marchand. There's a, there's a pun in there. Juan Judge Juan Marchand. Can't make it, can't make any comments, can't make or direct others to make public statements about the court or the district attorney or their family members. Wow, isn't that convenient? Isn't that convenient? Isn't it convenient? Why? Some people don't know this. We talked about it Sunday with Barnes. The judge's daughter is a political operative. I mean, I don't know, I don't know what what better way to say it. The judge's daughter, first of all, it looks like the judge is wearing eyeliner. Nothing wrong with that. It looks like he might have had like that chin, like that Kirk Douglas chin enhancement. When you hear, oh, I can't even pull up the videos to illustrate the corruption. They're faulting Trump for having links to this article, which features a picture of the judge's daughter prominently. And they argue that that's Trump intimidating the judge by linking to an article that features a photograph. Remember, oh, oh people, do you remember when... Um, Alexander Soros, George Soros's son, posted a link to an article that was in the Atlantic and that showed, you know, talked about inflation and crime. And it showed a picture of a bullet hole through glass and someone holding $45 in cash. And people put this together and said, holy crap, that looks like a dog whistle as a call to violence against 45, that being Donald Trump. And then uh, Laura Loomer really went into a, I'll call it a deep dive, but I, I think it's, I'll tell you why I think it's inaccurate or, or you know, uh, gamatria of, to some extent, like connecting things that are not connected. But she goes into it and says, look, it was $45 in cash. I actually have to show this if we're going to do this. Um, it was $45 in cash. The Atlantic inflation. Let me see here. The great normalization. This is it here. Yeah. Okay, great. I got it. Um. This was the article. Now, when, um, so you have the Atlantic and you got a bullet hole and you got 10, 20, that's 30, 35, 45. Oh, it's 47. Sorry, not 45. 47, because Trump would be the 47th president of the United States. So you got 10, 20, 30, 35, 45, 46, 47. And a bullet. And some people, when Alex Soros tweeted that out, everyone's like, is this not a call to violence? In fairness to Alex Soros, he was linking to the article and he doesn't get to choose the image that gets generated in the link on Twitter. So let's blame it on the Atlantic then. 
The Atlantic literally ran this ran this called the Great Normalization. Last year, crime and inflation crisis largely evaporated. So did the leading stories about what had caused them. And then you get a bullet hole and $47 in cash, which people took to mean uh, a dog whistle coded message. Do violence to 47. Laura Loomer went into a much greater detail, looked at the bills. Some of these are old bills with um, uh, JFK on them, et cetera, et cetera. And I see the only reason that might have gone a little too hard in the paint is that I Googled or tin eyed, whatever, you know, reverse image search. This image of the $47 in cash goes back to 2010. So whether or not it was, it wasn't deliberately set up for the purposes of that article, but it was deliberately chosen for the purposes of that article. So you can come to whatever conclusions you want to come to there. There are now, when, when Alex Soros does it, well, don't blame him. He's just linking to an article. He doesn't get to choose the images. That's an accurate and fair statement. Come to their political rivals. Well, that's no longer the standard anymore. Trump linked to this article, which features the, dudge, the judge's daughter prominently. Therefore, that's Trump threatening the judge's family. Complete and utter bullshit. Complete and utter double standard, hypocrisy, lawlessness coming from the Democrats and the media, and the deep state, and the rhinos. It's not necessarily even only the Democrats. It's the deep state, rhinos, um, administrative state that at all costs, for whatever the reason, does not want to see Trump ascend to power to the point where they will apparently stop at literally nothing. So this is the article from the New York Post. When is it dated? March 30th, three days ago. Dem clients of daughter of New York judge in Trump hush money trial raised $93 million off the case. Hmm. Hmm. So it's people related to judges or related to the judicial system politically profiting, politically profiteering off political persecutions. Where have we seen this before? Oh, that's right. Fannie Willis campaigning on Get Trump. Leticia James campaigning on Get Trump. New York nipple judge Arthur Engeron not campaigning on Get Trump, but put, publishing his articles to his alumni, taking pride, boasting about how he's getting Trump. Where else? I mean, I can think of a number of examples. I, I'll stop there. Three is enough. So they are politically profiting off Get Trump. This is his daughter. And hey, Trump didn't pick that picture. That's the New York Post. Are you, are, are you going to gag the New York Post? Does the New York Post now lose its First Amendment journalist, privilege, journalist rights? But listen to the story because the story is wild. And it's what we've seen mutatis mutandis from Georgia to New York to Colorado to some extent. People campaigning off, oh, the main secretary of state campaigning off the political persecution of their ideological rivals. Where do we see that? At one point, you had some Democrats saying, Putin poisons his allies and tries to jail them for life. Oh, well, here in America, they only try to jail them for life. They don't try to poison them yet. They learned their lesson as to how messy of a mess that left when they did it to JFK. They didn't, yeah, they, they gave them lead poisoning. Back in the day, they gave their political rivals lead poisoning. And now they just try to judicially execute them, judicially assassinate them. Listen to this. Two major Democratic clients of the daughter of the judge overseeing Trump's hush money trial have raised at least $93 million in campaign donations and used the case in their solicitation emails, raising renewed concerns that the jurist has a major conflict of interest. What I would like to know is what did they raise the last election cycle? This number is a lot. But if it's less than what they raised back in 2020, okay, so they're, I mean, they're going to campaign off whatever is going on right now. Just to steel man what the retort could be. Well, we didn't, I mean, I'd like to know what they raised the last time. I'm going to try to find it afterwards. But the argument would be they're going to campaign off whatever is going on right now. This is going on right now. They're going to campaign off it, period. Bottom line, the judge's daughter is working at a think tank, whatever the hell she's working at, and her clients uh, are raising Tens of a hundred million dollars off prosecuting, persecuting Trump. And her daddy's the one now who gets to pull the strings. He's got all the judicial tools to, you know, get to whatever judicial result he wants to play the game, to play it as much as he can, given the fact that it's going to go in front of a jury of Trump's peers in the corrupt district of New York. May as well, you know, go give Martin Luther King a trial in Birmingham, Alabama. No, but, but Martin Luther King was a so civil rights advocate. He was a civil rights activist. He wasn't a foul mouthed tweeter. Civil rights don't only apply to civil rights advocates and civil rights leaders. Civil rights apply to the people you hate, not the people you love, dummies. Yada, 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 raising okay, fine. The Trump's attorneys are considering filing another motion demanding Manhattan Supreme Court Justice Juan Marchand 
recuse himself from the trial scheduled to begin on April 15th. My prediction, it's not starting on April 15th. The judge's daughter, Lauren Merchant, is president of Authentic Campaigns. They always call themselves the exact opposite of what they are. The Democratic Republic of Congo. I mean, they, uh, the, the terrorist organizations always give the, the, the liberation, the People's Party. A Chicago-based uh, progressive political, and I say that with the exception of the People's Party of Canada, which is an unfortunate name for the party, PPC, because it actually sounds like CCP. It's a good party. A Chicago-based progressive political consulting firm whose top clients include, oh, Schiff for Schiff McBrain's the liar Adam Schiff, who lied to the American people about having seen actual evidence of Russia collusion. He lied to the American people knowing no one could rebut that lie because to rebut that lie would mean violating whatever confidentiality provisions they had of their committee hearings. That mother effer lied to the American people about having seen evidence of Russia collusion. Oh, that's one of their clients. Nothing to see here, people. Just a massive political incestuous party of corruption and fascism. Lead prosecutor Trump's first impeachment and Senate Majority Political Action Committee a major fundraiser. Okay, fine. Authentic campaigns and thus the judge's daughter is act. Authentic campaigns and the judge are actively seeking making money from this sham attack against the president. Oh, kind of like Leticia James got reelected twice. Trump, Trump is engaging in money laundering. The scheme which we think involves money laundering campaigned off of it, made money off of it, and now uses her campaign funds, I'm talking about Leticia James, as a personal slush fund. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's another case of it. Uh, okay, they told the Post, yada, yada, yada. Uh, the judge should do the right thing and immediately recuse himself. Yeah, don't hold your breath. Him continuing to be involved in the crooked Joe Biden-directed witch hunt is a complete violation of all applicable rules, yada, yada. Schiff's campaign, oh, there's another picture of the daughter. <gasps> Trump, Trump shared a link with a prominent, prominent picture of the daughter. <gasps> it's a threat. He's harassing the family. As if, they, as if these people get to hide from their corruption? Don't harass me for my corruption and just wait until we get to that psycho eyes McGee from Colorado. What's her name? I forget her name. That doesn't matter. Wait, wait until we get there. How dare people harass me for trying to violate democracy? How dare they? Schiff's campaign for U.S. Senate scored an eye-popping 20 million in aid since he began soliciting donations from the presumptive GOP from under yada yada. Uh, okay, off the whatever. We don't need to read all this. Trump has pleaded not guilty, obviously. He has denied having affairs with... Oh, <laughs> Trump has pleaded not guilty to felony counts of falsifying business records. They, they, went for, they went full felony. Alvin Bragg, another Soros-funded DA. Yada, yada. He's denied having affairs with both. With him. If, if convicted, he faces up to four years in prison. The daughter... Overseeing the prosecution of Donald Trump is a prominent Democrat activist. Then you got Liar McGee, Schiff for Brains, McShift Brains. Schiff's fundraising email began, it is a somber moment and, un and unprecedented for a former president to be indicted. But his alleged offenses are also unprecedented. Yeah, unprecedented. And so, so was Martin Luther King. Unprecedented to be driving 30 in a 25 zone. Unprecedented to dare show up and protest peacefully and, 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 and nonviolently. Unprecedented. Lock them up for the rest of their lives. Oh, no, no. But, but Martin Luther King was a civil rights activist. Donald Trump makes mean tweets and, and tries to save a country. Uh, we can stop here. Then the Trump will respond, as he always does, playing the victim and blaming others for having the temerity to investigate in the first place, Schiff said. What's Schiff doing right here? Playing the victim. <laughs> and, and blaming Trump for having the temerity to invest. Uh, it's, it's confession through projection of the highest order. Uh, then he wants ten dollars donations. Senate Majority Political politi the Senate Majority Political Action Committee, which supports the Democrat Senate campaigns, pocketed seventy three point six million since it began firing off fundraiser emails following the ex president's indictment. Breaking news: Donald Trump indicted by Manhattan grand jury. This is an important moment for our democracy, but our work isn't over. The group said, "Yada yada yada." Oh, uh, Lauren Merchant, who worked for Vice President Kamala Harris's twenty twenty presidential campaign, nothing to see there. As director of digital persuasion, Lord have mercy if we start bringing to the forefront that the daughter of the judge works in digital persuasion, also known as propaganda. Has said her father detests politicians using Twitter, an apparent reference to Trump. I've actually had a couple of conversations with my dad recently, so they're talking about it as well. It's not just that she's, it's not just that she's a daughter who's a political activist. She's talking about this with her dad. Her dad doesn't like Twitter. Hmm. Hmm. 
It's so unprofessional. And you know, that's how that's not how politicians should behave themselves. And I explained like, yeah, I think there's a lot of instances where it is not used in like when our president Trump tweets anything. She's talking about Trump and the tweets with her dad, who's the judge on the case. And her dad doesn't like the way Trump uses tweets. No, it's, to it's totally fine. The potential partisan activism, corruption of the daughter, totally unrelated to the father. Anybody who sees any potential risk or conflict is a um, extreme MAGA Republican. And Trump should be precluded from raising this issue and making it known to the people. Precluded. Gagged. And if he does it, they should lock him up. And if he does it, they should d default him. Guilt, like they did with Alex Jones. Just well, liability with Alex Jones. Just default him into judgment. <clears throat> yeah, I think we got the idea here. Trump took aim Tuesday on his Truth Social platform writing Judge Juan Marchand, a very distinct... Oh, we already talked about this. He's a hater, suffers from TDS. His daughter's a senior executive at a super liberal firm, yada, yada, yada. This guy's got really creepy eyes. Something going on there. Something, there is something going on there. <laughs> okay, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Um, and that's it. I think we can, we can probably end this story here. Judge Marchand, who donated $15 to former Vice President Joe Biden's 2020 campaign and has supported other Democratic causes did not return. Messages left with his daughter were also not returned. I wouldn't put much stock in the $15 donation, but holy crab apples. So they're going to gag him. And now he, now the, the judge who's got, says, I got to protect my daughter's corruption. I got, I got to prevent a, a criminally accused from publicly disclosing, raising awareness of the fact that my entire family consists of political activist corrupt hacks who are profiteering off of the persecution of Donald Trump, and I'm at the helm, in as much as you can pull the strings while leaving it to a jury, I'm at the helm of that prosecution. Nothing to see here, nothing First Amendment violative about that. Dershowitz believes it's violative of the First Amendment. Barnes believes it's violative of the First Amendment. Turley believes, unless I'm mistaken, it's violative of the First Amendment. And the only ones who don't believe it's violative of the First Amendment are the hack liars, like Lawrence Tribe, Judge Ludig, and Andrew Weissman. I love it when everything just comes full circle back to the beginning as we move into another issue. Oh. Let me just see here. I had one more. Trump's repeated calls for mass... Oh, this was another example of Lawrence Tribe just being a liar. Trump's repeated calls for mass deportations of foreign-born U.S. citizens. Inclu I just, and I just, I, I, I effing defy you to show me where Trump said that he's going to mass deport foreign born U.S. citizens. You are a goddamn liar, Lawrence Tribe. Your, your legal takes are absolutely insanely idiotic, but above and beyond being a stupid, partisan, political, legal hack, you are a liar. And there's no greater curse on this earth, in my view, than being known as, regarded as, and confirmed as having been and being a liar. No greater curse. 